Last time on Sisu, we shared with you how this big pod of dolphins just stayed with us. It must have been longer than half an hour. They were just playing and playing and playing. It was just unbelievable. You can never die of watching them. And then, of course, the hand making process. It was amazing. Then comes the drying phase, where the skills of the master jamonero, hand maker, play a crucial role. Here, temperature and humidity control are monitored by traditional methods without any kind of technical equipment. Instead, blinds and windows are opened and closed to regulate the flow of mountain air. The ham is cured in this way for a period lasting between 6 and 12 months. The process is concluded with the maturation phase, which takes place in the cellar. Just like good wines, the hams rest in these dark, silent surroundings for between 9 and 18 months. Island Tenerife, and we try to go into uh, where's that new building? Into uh, little marina over there. We found the entire coastline of Tenerife to be crammed with resort after resort. I have never seen so many resorts, like right on top of one another. It is just incredible. And then all the water activities, I mean you can go dolphin, whale and turtle watching in any conceivable form of floating device from viking boats to dinghies to you name it. I think paragliding, quite a bit of paragliding because there's always wind. So there was quite a bit of activity there. And then your jet skis, oh man, from your amateurs to your wannabe pros. I think all resorts have about three or four um, units that they rent out. It's just crazy how these guys, guys go up and down. Look at all those resorts in the background, it's crazy. And of course parasailing, 
quite a bit of parasailing and on the odd occasion where you find a wave there's a couple of surfers out as well quite a hectic coastline and then my all-time favorite that I was so surprised with was a little yellow submarine there's quite a number of them they take you for a 30-minute stint for a deep blue yonder experience Tonight is pizza night and that is the dough a brewing and the garlic butter and the cheeses all three one two three four of them tomato based our meat cerizo gammon mushrooms that all sounds divine oh and I mustn't forget with a little help from my friend. So we got ourselves a weaver on board, uh, what we call a braai, but you can make pizzas here. Yeah. So Jennifer and Mike, thank you so much, introduced us to the Weber's Pizza. Marina San Mikhail. As you can see, the sea is quite choppy. We are on the windward side. So let's see if they've got space for us. <laughs> We've encountered a couple of marinas where there is just no space for us. Not that we want to go into a marina. Not even for the dinghy there was space. So let's see what we can do here because we as I said we're on the wind side so we need a little bit of protection to put anchor out and then obviously not a huge dinghy ride. feels like Cape Town here except for the not so big waves but very short so we get hammered quite quite regularly um, we're doing we're getting now something like 30 to 32 knots of wind the main is a reef 2 the Genoa is also a reef And we're doing about six to seven knots. So I, I think we're doing great. We still need to go that direction, which is normally the <laughs> direction the wind is coming from. I don't know how that works out. But last night was perhaps in San Miguel, was perhaps one of our most, for me at least, the most scariest anchorage ever. And it was in very relatively shallow water. The problem is with the shallow water is that yeah you can put a long chain out but there was not enough room for us to actually put the put the scope out. So you 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 put the anchor down and you almost immediately need to hook the bridle up because otherwise it will not work. So to gauge that and for us not to go into the rocks at the back, so you need to also try to figure out the 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 circle that the wind can take you all around. So the circle was just 
ah, very tight. But that's the only place that we could find to actually do anchorage. Um, it was already getting late at night and we did not expect this wind. <laughs> The wind models were saying it's still a few days away, but it just arrived. So we, we had to go in and anchor, and it, the anchor was in sand, but not it was not too deep sand. So it's very rare to find sand in volcanic islands, but there was sand there. And there was a yellow submarine. Uh, that we all live in the yellow submarine. It was really a yellow submarine. And as we anchored, the yellow submarine was coming out. And I was thinking, ah, oh, maybe they should do a dive on our anchor. And yeah, so I did the dive myself. And yeah, you know, saw that the anchor was halfway in the sand, but the hold is just not good. Some happy going on over here. We are in an exhilaration zone and apparently the beginning of big winds coming towards Tenerife. my all-time favorite uh, orange and coffee get this uh, orange and coffee infused gin and tonic and the whole ritual that this guy goes through I mean I think they infuse the gin in a little jar with those coffee beans and orange rinds and then he's got a whole process of pouring the gin uh, uh, the tonic look at that it's just amazing but, oh man the taste this must have been one of the best GNTs I've had in a long long time. Mm. Yeah. Sitting right underneath the Spanish boom. <laughs> and the mat matador is right
people on it. Super awesome. En route to Santa Cruz. On the island of Tenerife. And that was just round it and round it. And now there's a new building. to come on Sisu. We had an extremely difficult crossing from Tenerife to Tender Lanzarote. What was supposed to take us 18 hours took us two nights and a full day. The ocean was just not happy. It was just hectic, crazy, upwind, horrible sailing. But we got there. <laughs> and then big, big issues. Our life raft dislodged itself at night with a hold. <laughs> that was quite a hectic thing to happen. Ah, and we did our first two mural at um, Arecife in Lanzarote. It was a bit of a nerve-wracking thing. I mean, it's, you can't really use tippings there to take that unless a guy repaints the whole wall. Ah, oh, Yatu, what an incredible friend, bar owner with this incredible voice, the flagship bar at Rubicon, lovely person, you guys must stop there. And then we dove an underwater museum. Thanks guys for watching, Patreon subscribers, everybody, thanks for all your thumbs up. It is greatly appreciated.